Yo, real quick, just before we even get into the video, can we take a second out just to admire how nice my video quality has gotten? Like, yo, OG followers will get it, but like, look at this, bro. Look at your screen. Listen to me. Li listen, listen to that. 2020 about to be a good year, bro. 2020 about to be a good year. What's going on? It's your man, Kobe. Welcome to another episode of Counter Kobe, where I pretty much just want to get your opinion, your two cents, your thoughts on a couple of topics that's been going on in music this week. See what you guys think. Then you can see what I think, man. Hopefully, we can talk about it or we can debate about it in the comment section below or on one of my other socials. Speaking of, come and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Corey DeSavory. My at name will be in the description below. Like I said, come and talk to me, man. I want to know what you guys have to think about some of this stuff. It's always interesting, man. Some of y'all got some interesting opinions. I will say that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into some of these topics for today so first things first what's been the big news of pretty much like the last 72 hours is the baby has gotten arrested again man that's right our new favorite charming hot rapper of the year is back in another legal dispute this time due to an alleged robbery between him and his crew now there's been a video that's circulating that allegedly shows the baby beating up an unknown man robbing him for his wallet and then him and his crew just kind of leaving off right now about 10 minutes before I started making this video, more details came out, right? So now we're getting a little bit more clarity on why exactly the baby was beating up this random man. Because if you look at the video, man, like I'm saying allegedly, but if you look at that video, it does kind of look like the baby. Like either that or one of his friends resembles him. Um, but apparently, man, apparently the whole altercation stemmed from a promoter not paying the baby his full amount for his booking fee. Now, he's saying that uh, the baby was scheduled to do a show on Thursday, yesterday, and pretty much at the, at the, he went to meet up with the promoter and the promoter tried to short him. It's saying, it's been reported that the baby was supposed to get 30K for the show. The promoter only tried to give him 20K and that's when everything just went wrong. So as we see in the video, the baby is beating up on the man. He robbed the victim of $80, a credit card, and then threw apple juice on him, bro. Like just to add insult to injury. Um, the baby also took the guy's phone and then as you can see in the video they dip so this is pretty much the baby strong arm in this promoter going like hey bro you ain't about to just cheat me i said 30k we agreed to 30k give me my money man give me my other 10k so i will say this man this is this is kind of the two sides that i fall on with this right is that the end of the day Yes, as an artist, at some point, you got to stand your ground, man. There are lots of shady people in this industry who will try to um, cheat you, for the lack of better words, right? Like, I've I've known other promoters, and I've heard horror stories from artists just about promoters doing this all the time, right? Like, yo, we're going to book you for 10K. You get there, oh, man, we only got six. You know, can that work? And then, like, you're already there. You and your team have flown out. You've paid for everybody to get there. You've paid for your equipment. you pay for your DJ. And now you're mad, right? You're blown because it's coming out of your pocket. On the other hand, man, on the other hand, this is the baby's first legal situation. He just got into the altercation last week in his hometown of Charlotte when he was doing that show that he was doing. And he's still, I think, going to court about the alleged murder case that he was fighting before he really started to pop. So I'm looking at it like, man, this is going to be a come up for the promoter, man. He's more than likely going to sue the baby. Um, there's video footage very clearly showing that it's the baby doing it, or at least someone that's running with him doing it. There's more details out that's pushing it back to the, the baby. And the legal costs and the amount of money that he would probably have to get awarded for the assault charge is going to be more than that 10K he was going after. But if, and this is me not knowing the baby, right? I don't know him personally, but I get the vibe that he doesn't care. Like, I get the vibe that. He would much rather send a message out to these promoters of like, look, yo, don't fuck with me. Give me my money and eat whatever costs come with it. You know, I guess for whatever whatever brand purposes or just for whatever, um, I guess, respect purposes, right? It is a respect thing at the end of the day. But also at the end of the day, the baby is bigger than this little financial mishap, man. Like, he's much bigger than this. Um, I could kind of get it. and it, what well, I could kind of get it from the point of, when I saw the price, when I saw that it was only 30K, I was like, man, I would think that the baby would at least be cracking like 50, 80K. I wonder if this show was like a favor or something. Or was it just like a, yo, you know, it's going to be a quick little stop. I can make a quick little 30K, little 30 racks real quick. And everything just went bad. And now I'm, I'm over here talking about the baby throwing apple juice on somebody, bro. So 
the baby's definitely bigger than this, man. He is it's gonna be some kickback. That promoter is definitely going to sue. I'm telling you, he's going to sue. It's gonna be a bag out for it in like two weeks. Watch. Um, and as of now, the baby has uh posted bail. He was arrested, uh being connected to the robbery. He posted bail for fifteen hundred peanuts to him, right? Especially when you just made twenty K off of a show. But like I said, he's bigger than this, so hopefully they're able to move past this. Promoters, stop fucking with these artists, bro. When they when they give you that booking fee and you tell them you're going to pay it, pay it, man. Because some of these artists are not industry enough yet to where they care to be cordial, bro. Like, they will whoop your ass as shown by the baby, right? Moving on to other news, man. This has been a week that's just been filled with, like, a lot of beef. And I've said that all of my episodes. I think every episode that I've come in here, there's been at least one big beef that week. Rap is crazy. Um, but if you think I'm talking about French Montana and 50 Cent, no. I started to, but I kind of don't care. The beef that I want to get into that I don't think any of us saw coming into 2020 is DJ Academics versus Nav. Um, if you follow either of them or if you follow any music site, their beef has just been over all these pages for the last couple of days because, like I said, it really felt like it came out of nowhere. Um, or at least I did a little bit of digging just to kind of see, like, man, what sparked this off? What what popped this off right? So what I'm thinking popped it off is this post that DJ Academics posted on Instagram, right? And it was pretty much a screenshot of Nav's tweets where he was talking about how he doesn't really feel like he's an artist. He feels like more of a producer and he just kind of stumbled into the artist thing, right? So he tweeted, lately it's been hard for me to relax. I'm really a producer that became an artist by accident. I don't think I'm as good at the artist stuff as I am producing. I just do it for my fans. So, you know, a little, a little moment of self-reflection, a little moment of clarity from now. DJ Academics posted it. I didn't see nothing wrong with it. I didn't see nothing crazy from it. Maybe Nav took the caption the wrong way. The caption reads, did Nav kick the door down for the brown boys to dominate the next decade in hip hop, right? So that was it. That post came out. Like two days later, Nav tweets, academics hops on and off dick so much, he probably got STDs. DJ Academics responds, sorry, bro. I only want Lizzo. By the way, this is the statement repeated by every rapper who's cold. I post the hot shit. Sorry. And from there, shit just spread out. It got crazy, right? So they're going back and forth. And DJ Academics brings up an interview that Nav did, I think, back in March, maybe like late February, early March, with Pitchfork, in which he was talking about how it bothered him that the, poppy, the paparazzi does not pay attention to him. The exact quote being, honestly, I feel like I'm just now starting to get famous, but fame is something I want. It's a good problem to have. I'm still not here because when I walk out of fucking Delilah in LA and TMZ will be standing out there with cameras and not even take a picture of me, I get sick. I get in my fucking Lambo truck right in front of them, all my jewelry on, and they don't even take one picture. I feel it now. I feel you, bro. I mean, it's kind of hard, though, when you're hanging out with the weekend, right? But, so, Nav, um, my bad, DJ Academics brings this up. Nav plays it off, says that he wasn't talking about himself in the interview. DJ Academics responds, backpedaling, address you dying from attention and being salty. You didn't get it. That's why you call out a media nigga. I ain't never seen you call out a rapper. Why? Nigga stole your style and went further with it, and you had to smile while you hurt inside. You ain't never called him out. <sighs> DJ, Acad <laughs> DJ Academics then went to Instagram to bring up Nav saying he would quit his music career. If Uzi quit. Trying to further add to the context of like, nigga, I'm not dick riding, you dick riding. Like, you're the one talking about you're going to quit if another rapper quits music, right? So, um, all in all, man, this is probably one of the most interesting beefs that I've seen kind of pop up. I mean, I guess it hasn't really been too many beefs pop up this year, but who expected a DJ Academics and Nav beef coming in 2020? I ain't even really expect Nav to be, like, talked about for a minute. Um, he hasn't done anything newsworthy to me. So, this right here, man, I think... I think this, I think DJ Academics kind of has this one right. Because like I said, looking at the tweets, I didn't really see the reason for now to pop off. Other than maybe he felt slighted by that post that DJ Academics posted. He probably knows him better than we do. He Maybe he knew he was being slick when we wouldn't think that he was being slick. Either way, either way, I think that of all the things that Nav could be doing right now to better himself, beefing with DJ Academics isn't one of them because just... My general consensus, a lot of you probably feel like this. 
I kind of feel like this, but I wanted to talk about it anyway because, like I said, it's weird. But it looks like a lot of people don't care. And it's not that a lot of people don't care because it's not big news. What I'm saying is a lot of people don't care because it's Nav, um, which is wild. Nav doesn't get any respect in music or it doesn't seem to get the respect that he thinks he deserves in rap music, rap culture. It doesn't seem like the rap culture gives him the respect he thinks he deserves. And now we're in this loop where he's arguing with DJ Academics about who's the biggest dick rider of... I don't know. I don't think they put a timestamp on it. So just who's the biggest dick rider, period, right? So I don't know, man. I'm interested to see what you guys think, man. Who you think got this beef, DJ Academics? Or do you think Nav was in the right for coming at DJ Academics? Do you think he should have even brought it up and addressed it and gave Nav this attention? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Moving on. What I want to get into next is R. Lennox, man. R. Lennox has started a conversation on all the black Twitter. If you're not on black Twitter, I highly encourage you to go and follow your funniest black friends and get on there ASAP so you can keep up with the conversation because it has been heated ever since this popped off. So what am I talking about, right? There was a troll. Um, I mean, it wasn't like a troll page. It seemed to be a guy's real account, but we're just going to call him a troll for the for lack of better terms. But there was a troll, right? And he tweeted, Ari Lennox and Tiana Taylor's ability to have dangerously high sex appeal while simultaneously looking like Rottweilers will always amaze me. To which Ari Lennox responded, people hate blackness so bad. She then went on to talk about how um, we never really see, or she feels like we never really see other races downing their women in their culture. She was like, we don't see Hispanic men downing Hispanic women. We don't see white men downing white women. Um, and she took to Twitter again to say, moms and dads, please love on your beautiful black children. Tell them they're beautiful constantly. Tell them black people are beautiful. Tell them black features are beautiful. Now, this is not the first time that Ari Lennox has come at a troll or someone on her Twitter for coming at her looks, right? Uh, I remember that being a tweet a couple months ago, maybe like two or three months ago, where someone said something about her nose and she commented back, it's a black feature. Please stop hating black features. Um, and then she kind of went on a rant about that. Now, I've been sending a lot of mixed responses about this. On one hand, there are the people that do agree with her, right? I'm not going to try to make this racial. I'm not going to try to get too political in this. But the side that they're falling on with her is that, you know, it is a race thing. We don't, they, they don't feel like they don't see men of their other races down in their women. And it's solely being black women who are attacked about their features and, you know, racial features that we see on other women, just to be real, right? Now, the other side is just like, it was a joke, right? Chill out. He was trying to be funny. You two women are, are two very beautiful women. We love you. And I even seen one comment say something like, she's on the verge of wallaying herself just because of how vocal she's been about, like I said, these trolls who have kind of come at her looks and just the incidents and stuff that's happening like the past couple months, right? Um, personally, I kind of follow on, on Ari Lennox's side, right? Like I said, without making this this show super racial, making it super political, that's why I follow that. Like, I agree with her. I agree with all the black women Twitter that, like, are up in arms about this. We do seem to see a lot of people that like to make jokes at the expense of black women and their black features. And then not really apply those same jokes to, like, other types of women. I feel like I see that a lot, um, especially on my social media timeline, especially on meme accounts especially from big comedians, especially from big outlets, all that stuff. So I do stand with her on that, but I also fall on the side of like, our Lennox, like, why do you care, right? At the end of the day, you are a superstar in the making, a very talented artist. You are one of the most successful new artists of the last two years. You make great music. You have a fan base that loves your music. Why let one troll get you riled up, right? Like I once had somebody tell me, you can't get mad at other people's opinions because at the end of the day, you can't really change it. It's what they think of you. Or oh, what is it? That's not what it said. I lied. What is it? Um, I, I don't worry myself about other people's opinions because that's their, I don't know. I don't know the exact quote, but I live by it. Why concern yourself with what other people think about you, especially one or two people that seem to be down on you or coming at you when I'm pretty sure she gets hundreds of DMs and, and tweets a day from people that love her, right? People that are trying to support her. I know I've shot her a couple of DMs just to be like, yo, you're beautiful. I love you. You know what I'm saying? Don't let these people get to you. So hopefully she's seen those. Cause I have noticed that sometimes artists do get wrapped up in like a negative box where you are only able to see the bad because when you see one bad thing, it just stands out to you so much. You kind of ignore everything else and then you dive on that. So I do think that like maybe she just needs to chill from social media for a minute. You know, um, clearly the fans coming at her is getting to her. You know, clearly like she's not one to really like take it. But as far as the broader point that she's making in the conversation that she's starting around what that guy said, I do agree with her like 100%. So 
interested to see what you guys think about that. Let me know in the comment section. Are you on Ari's side? Do you side with the troll? Do you think it was just a joke? Um, do you think this is a conversation we need to have? Like I said, let me know. Interested to hear your two cents on that. Moving on, man. This week, we had an OG apologize for just the way he's been influencing the youth in his lengthy, lengthy career, right? And I'm talking about Juicy J. Juicy J tweeted, if I inspire anybody to do drugs, I apologize. And this is wild coming from Juicy J, right? Like, this is a guy who had a tour called the Never, so the Never Sober Tour, right? This is a guy whose motto is stay trippy, right? Which I don't think he's talking about falling and hitting the ground, man. I think we know he's talking about getting smacked. So it's interesting when you see the artists whose entire brands are built around, like, drugs and drug use coming out and actively talking out against drugs and drug use. It feels a little um, it feels a little weird at first, but I am glad that he's doing it. Now, I'm pretty sure that he's been inspired by the recent uh, recent incident that happened with Juice World, right? Juice World's death due to the overdose. I'm pretty sure that's what made him want to say this. And it makes me think about an old Future interview when he said, like when he first met Juice World, and Juice World was telling him about how Future's music pretty much inspired him to try lean and do these drugs. And Future was like, man, like, I feel bad, bro. Like, he was a kid. I wasn't thinking about it at the time. Um, he was, here's this child that I influenced to do drugs, to want to try drugs. And, like, this is what he's become. So I feel like Juicy J is probably having the same remorse, man. Like, when you've been around as long as he's been around with 3-6 Mafia and you talked about drugs as much as they've talked about, you've had some of your biggest songs literally be just, like, the soundtrack for drug users and people who are really into some of that stuff. And then you think about all of those thousands and thousands of people or probably kids or teenagers or young adults at the time that then grew up to become drug users and maybe even abuse the substance. I can see how, as an artist, you start to feel remorseful about that, especially an artist at his age who's probably, you know, he's mature at this point, man. Juicy J's an older guy. He's at the point in his career where he's not, he's no longer this young, reckless artist who doesn't give a fuck because he once was an artist who did not give a fuck. There's an interview out there of him talking about this exact same situation years ago in which he was like, look, man, it's not my job to raise these kids. It's their parents' job. If a kid listens to my music and wants to do drugs and he goes and tries drugs, that is not on me. That is on the parents. Fast forward five, six, seven years later, and he's expressing different sentiments because he's grown, man. He's grown as a person. He's grown as an artist, I'm sure. Now, I don't think, I don't 100% believe it wholeheartedly all the way through and this why this is why i never believe artists when they start coming out talking out against drugs but then they still make music talking about how they use drugs which if it is their lifestyle if it is something they really are doing then i can't knock an artist for talking about their real life and their music but then you start to look like a hypocrite man it's like you can't tell me bro don't be out here taking lean and popping pills and then you got a song making drinking lean and popping pills sound fun and then you doing that shit and it's a part of your lifestyle. It sends the wrong message to just a fan of the artist in general, right? Like, I remember Trippy said something like that on, on his live. He was like, I'm not going to do drugs anymore, but I'm still going to talk about it. And like, that's, that's just as bad. That's, that's just as bad as doing it in front of them. I will argue even worse because they're going to listen to the song more times than they see you doing the drug. So you're still beating that message into their head. But I am glad that Juicy J does feel remorseful. I think we need more artists who have been a part of pushing the drug culture to the forefront of music, just making it as big as it is, we need to see them be remorseful. We need to see them say, hey, I was 20-something years old. I wasn't in a good space. You know, I didn't know any better. This isn't what's up. Now I do know better, and I'm trying to communicate it to you. We also need to see some of these older legacy drug artists stand with the new younger artists who are talking about it and get some of them to change their ways. Now, I know it's going to be hard because it's hard to tell a 17, 18, 19, 20-year-old with hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars that's having fun that you shouldn't be doing drugs. That's just not cool. It's going to be the same cycle. A lot of them are realizing they're like 40, 45, like, oh, shit, I shouldn't have been talking about that. But I think that if they stood with a lot of the younger artists who are taught, who have been talking about it, who are now remorseful about it, like the Trippy Reds, then we will start to see, you know, a bigger impact from artists actually saying like, oh shit, my bad, um, I'm sorry that I made you do drugs, right? That's what I think. Like, you gotta live the lifestyle. If you're gonna tell me how to do it, but you gotta show me you ain't doing it, and then you gotta get somebody that look like me around my age doing what I do, telling me it's not cool. That's the only way kids are gonna listen, bro. That's the only time they ever do listen.
And lastly, man, the last thing I got for you guys today is X is back in the news. Kind of, sort of, not really, but kind of, sort of, right? So it is being reported that X's mom, Cleopatra Bernard, is countersuing or actually asking for the lawsuit from Jimmy Duval, who is the producer of Look At Me, the song that popped X off, right? Um, she is asking for that lawsuit to be dropped now. Back in March, Jimmy Duval filed a lawsuit for $2 million, claiming that he was pretty much owed back royalties from the song and that he was not receiving his proper uh, producer credits for the song. He felt like he wasn't being properly uh, credited for it on anything, and pretty much like he wasn't getting the clout for it that he wanted, right? Now, as of this past week, like I said, X's mom, Cleo, has asked that the court dismiss the case based on the fact that she has been holding on, or they've been holding on to the original deal that Jimmy Duval and X struck, and the fact that she feels like Jimmy Duval just is not knowledgeable on how the industry works. And what she said was, apparently the original deal gave X 50% of the collaboration royalties, which, whole different conversation. If you don't know about royalty splits and all that stuff, man, so that's a whole conversation that's too complicated for this video. But apparently X was, um, X was supposed to receive 50% of the collaboration royalties while Duval and another producer by the name of Mala were supposed to split the other 50%, both getting 25% cent, 25 a piece because apparently Mala felt like uh, the beat was stolen from one of his songs. So to kind of like smooth over that whole thing and to just make it easy for them to move on with the song, they just split the other 50%, 25 for Duval, 25 for Mala. Now, Cleo is also, also claiming that Jimmy, bro, you don't know how the industry works. Like, you don't know what's going on. You out the loop. In her, uh, in her, in her claim sent about the lawsuit, uh, there's a statement that reads: the defendant claims reveals a complete lack of understanding as to the music industry's current mechanism for attributing producer credits. It is undisputed that the recording was only released digitally. It is well known that up until very recently, the vast majority of digital content providers, such as Apple Music, Spotify. Pandora, SoundCloud, etc., did not have a mechanism by which producers could be credited. Uh, she's also demanding that do all get nothing, not a cent, not a penny, and that her attorney fees be paid for for the duress and trouble that she's been put through dealing with this court case. Now, this is how I feel, right? So, as far as the agreement, like I said, royalty splits and just how that whole thing goes with the songwriter producers can get very complicated. But if it's something that has been agreed upon, and which my guess is it got agreed upon before the song started popping off, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below, you know a little bit more. But I'm going to assume that they struck this agreement either right before the song really popped off or as it was moving. Like, not before it was looking at me right, but probably when it started really making noise in the SoundCloud world. Meaning that if that is what you agreed on, you cannot come back later when you see the song doing better than you thought it would be or making more money than you thought it would or bigger than you thought it was going to be. And then now you feel like you're cheated. You feel like the deal isn't right. That's not okay. That's why people get everything in black and white from the beginning. And that's why you got to believe in your shit, especially when you sign a paperwork. Now, on the other hand, I also feel Cleo as far as the producer attributes. That is true. I think that it, it, it Spotify and Apple Music just started allowing producer credits, what, top of 2019, maybe end of 2018? Look at me by Duval came out 2017. So that would have been something that, you know, would have really been able to be done properly, at least not the way that he's asking, until about last year or until, you know, like a year and some change ago. And now if he's coming from a space of I reached out to them about that once it became available, I tried to make it happen, and she was ignoring me, and the label was ignoring me, then I stand with him on that. 1,000% agree, man. Get your credits. If you made it, you deserve to be, it deserves to be known that you made it to the world. Get your clout. Get your credits. Get your clients. It's going to come from it. But if it's strictly off of it not being credited in the past, when there wasn't a system for it to be credited in the past, then Cleo's in the right, man. I got to give it to her. Um, surprisingly, man, to me, I felt like when I saw this, this was going to be like another money grab. But surprisingly, man, she's not asking for any money. She just want her attorney fees back. I thought she would counter sue and like try to get some bread out of him off of the fact of like she's putting their state through this and kind of dragging their name through the mud over it. Well, not really dragging their name through the mud, but just like, you know, putting it out there into the world that this would make another producer probably think that, oh, X was a bad business practicer. He was cheating producers, um, especially with just 
how much is known that a lot of rising artists do just like dick over rising producers all the time. It happens so much that I could completely see just Jimmy Duval trying to protect himself, right? Like he's trying to make sure he gets paid, he's trying to make sure he gets his credit, and he's trying to make sure that he's able to eat off of it for as long as he can, right? But like I said, that's the deal, man. That's the deal. If you agree to 25%, 25% is what you get. If you're mad about you not being credited, there was no way for you to be credited. Hopefully you're getting credited now. Actually, let me look. Let me see if that changed up. Let me see. Oof, so I'm looking at it on Spotify, and yeah, he's still not being credited, man, so I kind of feel him. Um, even though it's not super popular for every producer to be credited, and, ah, uh, yeah, let me backtrack a little bit. So yeah, I have noticed it's not super popular for every artist to credit every producer unless they have a big name or brand established, and they're not going to get some clout off of it right, which is 100,000, 2 million percent fucked up. If you made the beat, if Listen, artists, bro. They made the beat, man. Give them that credit. Like, you'll just get so much good come out of it, build good relationships out of it, give everyone their credit with credit is due. So I do feel Jimmy on that, man. Hopefully you get awarded your credit for it, bro. Hopefully you get your, your placement titles on everything. Hopefully you get the clout that you deserve and that you work for. As far as the deal, bro, you signed it, man. That's what you agreed to, so you stuck with it. Outside of that, man, this was a pretty dry week for music. I guess that everybody in the music industry is on vacation. Maybe every artist was too scared that other artists were going to do, like, New Year's album drops, so they didn't drop anything. But there really wasn't any new music that came out today. So if there's anything that you checked for from an artist that maybe I just didn't see on my radar, let me know about those projects in the comment section below. I got a lot of free time, man, because usually I'm catching up on projects today. But now I can't, so I got a lot, a lot of free time. Let me know about some new stuff. Other than that, like I said, man, come and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Cobra Save. You come talk to me. Let me know your opinions. Also, I have my phone number in the description below. Text me, lock in. You can text me and talk about some of this stuff all the time. Just don't be weird, bro. Like, just send good vibes. Let me know what's up. Lock in. We'll talk, bro. Just don't be weird about it. Other than that, like I said, if you got anything from this video, like and subscribe. Let your friends know about this. Looking to hear about you guys' two cents. Other than that, I will see you guys next week. Peace.